By now, you've probably heard that the government of Canada reduced the immigration targets in 2025 from 500,000 to 395,000 people, meaning that they are going to accept a lot less, actually more than 100,000 people less on their different immigration programs. This is in response to, of course, people not liking many immigrants moving to Canada, and kind of the government is trying to make the public happy. But let's look into the details of these changes, because as they say, the devil is in the details, and see how it will impact immigration to Canada and how it will impact our country. It's quite interesting to know that, uh, in my humble opinion, the plan is a very, very bad plan. And I'm trying to explain why this plan is not going to work and why this plan is potentially going to hurt our country even more. But first, let's just break down this plan. And uh, if you want to know more, I have an article. I actually posted the image here. You can read that for more details. But I just quickly explain immigration to Canada. Immigration to Canada is normally divided into four major options. The first option is economic class. This means people who can economically establish themselves in Canada if they immigrate to Canada. The government has decided to reduce uh, this number significantly. In fact, uh, under the express entry system, the number will change slightly. So it, they will lower the number of people that they accept on their express entry system. But the way that they have redesigned the definition of applicants under express entry is interesting. So in the past, we had three groups, Federal Skilled Worker Program, Federal Skilled Trades Program, and Canadian Experience Class. In 2025, we actually have two major options that you could immigrate to Canada, mostly under the express entry system. The first group are those people that uh, they fall under a specific category. Those categories were defined by the government of Canada in 2023, and there are basically six categories. The first category is uh, STEM or science, technology, engineering, math. The other category is transport. The other category is francophone people. The other category is healthcare, trades, and eventually agriculture and agri-food. The government intends to majorly invite people under only three of those categories. They haven't said that they will stop all the category, all the other three categories, but they said that their focus will be on healthcare and uh, trades and francophone. In fact, about 8.5% of all the people who immigrate to Canada next year under federal programs, those people who intend to reside outside Quebec, they will be francophones. So if you look at this, this means that if you already started a job under transport or under agri-food or agriculture, uh, or under science, technology, engineering, and math, unfortunately, I have bad news for you because you made the wrong investment for immigration to Canada. Of course, we don't know what would be the exact codes that uh, they will invite people under those codes. So we have to wait and see how the invitation will go. But um, generally speaking, we have now limited number of people invited under this group. Roughly speaking, about 42,000 people will be invited under these categories. On top of that, they have another category, which is their major category um, under express entry, that they call it in Canada focus. This means that majority of people who are able to immigrate to Canada under this group are those who enter the pool of express entry uh, under Canadian experience class. So you enter there because you have one year of acceptable Canadian experience and because of that you can immigrate to Canada. It may seem fascinating because now we are focusing more on inviting people who are inside Canada, but there are two problems. Problem number one 
is that the number that they the increased number under Canadian experience class will not def necessarily respond to all those temporary residents who are in Canada. Why? Because the government has slashed their targets for provincial nominee program from 120,000 people to only 55,000 people. That's a whopping 54% lower than what it was supposed to be. So what will those 60 plus thousand people can do? They can only apply under Canadian experience class. And guess what? The number that is increased under Canadian experience class, which will be likely around 20, 30,000, will not respond to the 60 plus thousand shortfall that we have under provincial nominee program. The other issue is that by focusing on Canadian experience class, we practically stop accepting applications under federal skilled worker program and under federal skilled trades program. Overall, the economic immigration will accept less number of applicants. The area that they have targeted probably the most is the business programs. So by default, back in the day, the business immigration to Canada consisted of three different options, a federal entrepreneur program, investor program, and federal self-employed class. The government revoked federal entrepreneur program and the investor program in 2014. Instead, they introduced a pilot in 2013 called a startup visa program, which is now solidified and that is a main business immigration program. In April of 2024, they also stopped accepting applications under federal self-employed class. However, they mentioned they will continue processing those that are in the inventory. So this means under business class, now we have two groups, startup visa and also federal self-employed class. The target initially for 2025 was 6,000 under these programs. However, the government slashed it to 2,000. Now the interesting part here is that the backlog of the startup visa program is almost 30,000 people. So when you do the math, even if you assume that 60-70% of these applications will be refused, we still have a huge backlog and 2,000 people per year, which includes self-employed and startup visa, will not respond to the current backlog. And we will see that the processing time will likely go above five years for the group of a startup visa. Having said that, the situation is not that bad for a startup visa because now many of them, if they are essential members of their group, they can apply for three-year open work permits, come to Canada, work here uh, for any employer while they are waiting for the applications to be processed. So in a way, they have tried to come up with some solutions for a startup visa, but still becoming a permanent resident under the startup visa program takes a lot longer, considering that right now this is the only, probably the only plausible immigration option that you can directly immigrate from uh, outside Canada to Canada under the, uh, the specific federal program is this one. Startup visa still remains something that you can hang on to. In terms of family reunification, which is another option for immigration to Canada, the focus is not whether you can economically establish yourself in Canada, but the focus is more on whether you can be sponsored by a family member in Canada. Typically, the sponsor is a Canadian citizen or permanent resident in Canada who is above 18 years old, and they are sponsoring their spouses, common law partners, children, whether biological or adopted, or their parents or grandparents. Sometimes you may even sponsor other family members. But uh, the government has reduced uh, the number of applications they accept under these programs roughly by about 17, 18%. Now, the issue that I have here for spousal sponsorship and uh, common law partner and children sponsorship, what we are probably going to face 
is more processing times for them. So right now, the processing time is roughly around 12 months. We'll probably see that the wait times for this group will increase. But the funny part is parents and grandparents. Next year, they are going to accept 24,500 parents and grandparents. We already have a huge backlog. And since 2020, the government of Canada has not opened the expression of interest pool for this group. So I'm not sure what will happen to this group. Will they accept new applicants or under parents or grandparents? Uh, will they open the pool of expression of interest or they will just focus on reducing the backlog on this under this program? We'll have to wait and see. The third group of immigrants to Canada are those people who immigrate as refugees. Now, refugees in Canada are divided into two groups. One group are those people who are resettled to Canada. A majority of refugees are those people who are resettled to Canada. So they basically file a refugee claim with UNHCR outside Canada, and then the government of Canada under various programs resettle those people to Canada. When those people come to Canada at the time of landing, they become permanent residents. But many people also come to Canada, whether regularly or as just regular visitors or students or uh, workers, and then they later file a, a, a claim for refugee status in Canada while they are in Canada. The government has reduced the number of people they are going to accept uh, as permanent residents under these two groups. Now, the effect, especially on those people who are inside Canada, will be significant. I give you an example. As of September of 2024, the backlog of Refugee Protection Division, it means people who are waiting to uh, their refugee claims being processed, is now 250,000 people. Just think about that. 250,000 people. Not many of these people will be granted refugee status in Canada. But traditionally, about 70% success rate exists. So if you do the math, you realize that if the government is going to accept only 20,000 people as permanent resident under these programs in Canada, then guess what? The backlog for the permanent residents for refugees will increase significantly. Right now, the processing time is roughly speaking around two years, but based on this, it means that the processing times for refugees will increase significantly in order for them to become permanent residents. The good news is that they become protected and they can remain as temporary residents. They can receive work permits and work in Canada and contribute to our economy. But at the end of the day, it will be a tedious, time-consuming process for those refugees. The last group are humanitarian uh, group, which is basically those people who cannot immigrate to Canada under any other program. They are inside Canada or they are inadmissible to Canada and they file a um, an application under humanitarian compassionate considerations. Mm -hmm. They ask to become permanent residents because of these circumstances. Or we have another group called permit holder class. The government increased the number of applicants under these programs from 8,000 to 10,000. So that's about a 2,000 increase, but that increase is not significant. Why it's not significant? Because right now we have around 2.6 million study permit holders, work permit holders in Canada that they want to become permanent residents. And as I mentioned before, the standard options for becoming permanent residents are now very limited. So many of these people desperately will try to apply under humanitarian and compassionate considerations or they will file refugee claims, which puts more pressure on our system. Mm -hmm. Now, by reducing the number of applications we accept or the number of people that we become permanent residents, especially by targeting people who are inside Canada, 
the government of Canada is creating a huge chaos because despite all their efforts from last September, the number of non-permanent residents in Canada was increased from 2.2 million to slightly more than 3 million. Out of those 400,000 people, they are already protected people or they are refugee claimants. But guess what? We have 2.6 million study permit holders, work permit holders, or their family members that they are in Canada. They want to become permanent residents, but the standard options are not there. So what will happen is that in the near future, we will see more people applying for refugee more people applying under humanitarian and compassionate considerations, more undocumented immigrants staying in Canada, and many more people who will cross the border to the United States to seek opportunities in there. So what does that mean? This means more pressure on our immigration system, more pressure on our enforcement agencies, and guess what? More tensions with the United States regarding the wrong policies that have been rolled out by the government of Canada in the past few years and a very, very, very bad solution that they tried to find just to look good to the public. I'm very sorry, but I don't see any good in this change. And uh, maybe a couple of years later, we will have another announcement by the government saying, oh, what a bad mistake was that. But that will probably be too late. If you want to hear more from me, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it with others.